Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jeffrey. Today I'm going to talk about some fibrous proteins in your body and the two big ones I'm going to talk about are collagen and elastin. So let's dive right in. Collagen is going to be your most abundant protein in your body. It's going to be stabilized by hydrogen bonds and those hydrogen bonds are formed uh, uh, within these triple helix structures. Now you're going to have these alpha chains. You're going to need three of them to form a triple helix, obviously, and they're going to be formed from pro alpha chains. And um, those pro alpha chains are going to be hydroxylated residues. So you, you can have lysine residues that are um, that are going to be hydroxylated by lysohydroxylase. And then uh, you need these hydroxylysine residues to uh, to glycosylate them. Uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, now, the, the triple helix structure is going to have a glycine for every three residues. Now, keep in mind that uh, this is a very tight helix, so you're going to need bends in it. Uh, and the best way to get bends are going to be glycine and prolines. So uh, you can imagine why you would need a glycine every three residues, and then it's going to be uh, interspersed uh, with a lot of proline and hydroxyprolines. And the hydroxyproline residues are going to be formed by prolohydroxylase. Okay, so prolohydroxylase basically uh, uh, hydroxylates a proline residue, and you're going to need vitamin C as a cofactor. And prolohydroxylase is extremely important. That hydroxyproline is extremely important in collagen stability. So if we take a look at a graph here, um, and we take a look at the stability of collagen, uh, the helix content uh, based off of a temperature, you can see that at about 40 degrees, which is physiological temperature, for your normal uh, with vitamin C as a cofactor, you can see that about 100% or so uh, of your collagen residues are going to be in a helix formation, which is exactly what you need for functional collagen. Um, now, uh, at, a, at around the same temperature for uh, without vitamin C as a cofactor for your prolohydroxylase, you can see a massive decline in your helical structure, and that's going to be very bad. And um, uh, how is it going to be really bad, you might ask? Um, it's going to lead to uh, decreased stability and tensile strength of your collagen and uh, this disease called scurvy, which you've probably heard of before. It presents with bleeding gums, hemorrhages, and poor of wounds if you do um, break your skin or any of that good stuff. All right, um, so uh, moving on to collagen synthesis, uh, collagen is going to be an insoluble protein, okay, but your cell itself uh, and where it makes proteins is actually very soluble. It's very um, hydrophilic, right? It's, it's a wet environment. So how does it travel from your cytoplasm to your outer membrane uh, where uh, you have that collagen. Well, first you synthesize procollagen. Now, procollagen is going to be more hydrophilic because of this in terminal and C terminal. And um, these N and C terminals are going to have uh, disulfide bonds and things like that to help make it uh, more hydrophilic. Okay. And, uh, and then you're going to cleave this off when you reach the outer membrane. <clears throat> so you get that active form of collagen. Um, it's synthesized through one or two collagen genes for collagen synthesis. Now, keep in mind, it's very different from your triple helix. Uh, basically, you're just using the products of these two genes, making that triple helix from it, okay? And then you're going to have select proline or lysine residues, like we were talking about before, your prolohydroxylase and um, your uh, lysohydroxylase, okay? And uh, you're going to hydroxylate them, and then certain um, hydroxylysine residues are going to be glycosylated, like with the o glycosylation we were talking about before. And then we're going to have um, chaperone proteins uh, to help form that triple helix structure. Now, uh, this type of structure is extremely complex, so um, when you first synthesize your protein, it's not going to fold uh, exactly in a perfect triple helix structure, so you're going to need some help from chaperone proteins such as heat shock protein 47, which help um, form that triple helix structure, okay? 
And then you're going to have lysyl oxalates with copper. Now that's going to deaminate your lysine and your hydroxylysine residues that we were talking about before. It's going to form allylysine or hydroxyallylysine. And these are going to be aldehydes, okay? And that's going to form the covalent bonds. And those covalent bonds are actually extremely important in keeping that collagen molecule uh, together and functioning. Now there's going to be certain diseases uh, associated with um, <clears throat> collagen, and it's going to be Ehlers-Danlos or osteogenesis imperfecta. Now, Ehlers-Danlos is going to be uh, a defect in your collagen type 3 or 5. Uh, your type 3 is going to be kind of atypical, um, and it's going to present with fragility of your skin. It's going to have um, weakness in your ve uh, vascular vessel walls, okay? And the most severe is going to have lethal arterial rupture. Uh, as you can imagine, you're going to have a lot of internal bleeding with that. Now, uh, type 5 is going to be a classic. It's more commonly presented in Ehlers-Danlos, and it's going to be resulting in hypermobility of your joints and hyperextension of your skin. Uh, so that's just like if somebody shows you their hitchhiker's thumb, but it can go back a lot further than that. And then for those who can like stretch their neck out for like for like a foot. Uh, uh, so it's just, it's like kind of cool, but at the same time, it is, uh, it is a problem. And then you're going to have osteogenesis imperfecta. That's going to be a mutation in your call A1, uh, 1A1 or call 1A2 gene. And that's going to lead to a displacement of glycine. Now remember, glycine is extremely important, right? It's, it happens in every three residues. So if you don't have that, obviously you're going to have a problem with your um, collagen fibers, which are extremely important. So if we look at type 1, it's going to be presenting with mild uh, symptoms such as bone fractures. When you're younger, you're going to have less bone fractures when you're older. Um, it can present with hearing loss and also blue sclera. So the white part of your eye, that part's actually uh, kind of blue. So um, that, th those are more mild symptoms. Obviously, you're not going to die or anything, um, but it's still a problem that you need to see a doctor for. Type 2 is going to be your most severe. You're going to die in utero. Um, so uh, these always happen in babies. They don't get born and they just die. And it usually is because of respiratory problems, because of underdeveloped lungs and also fragile rib cages, because um, that call 1A1 and 1A2 are not... Um, are not functioning properly, so you can't you can't even get um, a correct rib cage. So that's why you die. Uh, type three and type four are going to be also severe, but uh, you can survive with the correct treatment and if you detect it early. So it's going to present with a variety of problems. It could be uh, dentiogenesis imperfecta or scoliosis. So uh, this is going to be in your teeth and this is going to be in your back. All right. Now moving on to elastin. Uh, elastin is also an insoluble uh, protein. It's amorphous and it's elastic. Um, and it's going to be majority in your skin vessels and ligaments. Now it's composed of elastin, which you might expect, and microfibrils. And it's going to have a hydrophobic region and a hydrophilic region. And as you might imagine, your hydrophilic region is going to have some charged residue. So in this case, it's going to be lysine and uh, an uncharged uh, nonpolar molecule called alanine. And then your hydrophobic is going to have all of these different um, hydrophobic or nonpolar residues. Okay, so if you stretch out elastin, for example, if you're stretching your skin, um, you're going to be exposing your elastin to uh, water and or, or liquids, and uh, it, you're going to be exposing that hydrophobic region. So it's not going to like that very much. So the second that um, you stop stretching it or you stop pushing, um, then it's going to snap right back into place with the hydrophilic regions uh, snapping back. Okay, so you're going to have, <clears throat> for elastic synthesis, you're going to have fibroblasts that secrete uh, tropoelastin, and this is going to be that soluble uh, type of protein. So if we were talking about procollagen before, this is uh, uh, synonymous with uh, procollagen for elastin. Okay, and then that's going to go to, directly to your extracellular membrane, and you have fibrillin 1 that acts as a scaffold for that extracellular tropoelastin. And this allows for that cross-linking and for it to become insoluble. 
Um, now you're going to use lysyl oxidase, which we were talking about before. It's going to use copper as a cofactor. And um, it's going to act on that lysine, turning it into allylysine, and um, turning that allylysine into a demosine, which are elastin specific. So that's how you can tell the difference between um, elastin and uh, collagen, because they, they both use the same enzyme. Okay? Uh, and now your desmosine is going to have three allylysine and one lysine residues, and those are going to be covalently linked together. Um, if your lysyl oxidase doesn't work, uh, you can have aneurysms because um, you have less cross-linking of that elastin, okay? Um, and then one of the diseases that presents with this is Marfan's. That's going to be a defect in your fibrillin 1 or your FBN1 gene on your chromosome 15. And it's going to present with long limbs, uh, just all of these different um, symptoms, and you can read that yourself. Now, um, moving on to glycosylation, you're going to have N glycosylation or O glycosylation. N is going to be on your amino end of your protein. O is going to be on the hydroxyl end of your protein. Okay, so you're going to, for your N glycosylation, it only happens to mannose rich uh, uh, oligosaccharides, and those are going to be bound to this um, uh, protein in your rough ER called dolichol. Okay, and it's going to be transferred you're only going to have in glycosylation on asparagine residues, and um, you're going to transfer that oligosaccharide onto that asparagine residue for a protein that docks on the rough ER for secretion. Okay, and that's going to, uh, uh, and then you you can have uh, trimming of that carbohydrate, that sugar, uh, in your rough ER or Golgi. Uh, you can transport it to your lysosomes, uh, your blood, or your uh, plasma membrane. Uh, for lysosomes, um, lysosomes use these special uh, res residues, glycosylated residues, um, or glycosylated proteins, sorry. You're basically going to have that mannose phosphorylated, okay, so on, on that mannose 6-phosphate, okay. So um, you, if that doesn't happen, then you can have eye cell disease, which is the inability to phosphorylate your mannose 6-phosphate in your Golgi, and that uh, leads to these uh, proteins, uh, proteoglycans, uh, so recreated into your plasma and your urine. And as a result, you can have cardiopulmonary um, complications. And these patients typically die at four years of age. For your O glycosylation, that's going to be on your hydroxyl groups. Um, so you, this happens to proteoglycans, mucins, and blood groups. Uh, basically, proteoglycans have more sugar in them. Um, and then uh, you can have oligoglycosylation onto protein or collagen. So for proteins, you're going to have that first sugar to a serine or threonine residue. And um, that, that happens mostly in mucins. And then for uh, collagen, it has to be on that hydroxylysine that we were talking about before. Um, you can also use oligoglycosylation for blood type. So for your A blood type, you're going to have uh, uh, G-A-I-N-A-C. And then for uh, B, you're going to have galactose as your sugar. Um, for your O type, you're going to have nothing. There's not going to be anything. And then for your AB, you're going to have both. Okay. And then your glycocalyx is going to be um, the prevention of leukocyte adhesion. Okay. Uh, certain diseases that affect the O site glycosylation, uh, viruses, they attach to glycoproteins and bacteria can attach to glycolipids to dock onto your cell and to infect them. Okay, so then um, two different bacteria are E. coli and H. pylori, um, and these are just going to be the different uh, residues that they would attach to. Okay, and then moving on to glycoproteins, proteoglycans. Proteoglycans are going to be 95% uh, of these uh, glycoso, uh, glycosaminoglycans, which are GAGs. These are part of, um, the proteoglycans are going to be part of your extracellular membrane, and they can be glycosylated in the Golgi, okay? And then your GAGs, they're going to be long and unbranched. They're going to be negative, and they're often sulfated. You can have a lot of these different GAGs, so it's going to be uh, chondroit chondroitin, um, keratin sulfates, um, dermatin sulfates, heparin sulfates, heparin. Heparin's uh, involved in the, uh, 
uh, unclogging your blood. So uh, you can receive heparin injections if you're having surgery, for example. You don't want any blood clots happening when you're under the knife. Um, uh, and then an important one is hyaluronic. Oh my gosh, I can't pronounce hyaluronic acid. Okay, and that's going to be synthesized directly into your extracellular matrix, and it's going to be connected to core proteins uh, via link proteins. And um, you typically see this in your vitreous humor in your eye, your synovial fluid in your um, bones, in your joints, cartilage, and loose connective tissue, and uh, you can have proteoglycan aggregates, which is uh, that hyaluronic acid with your proteoglycans. And what that looks like is a hyaluronic acid as the backbone, and then you have proteoglycans on top. Okay. So I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. I hope that uh, this dumped things down a little bit for you and uh, uh, organized things in a way for you to understand. Thanks. Have a great day.